Oh, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. It, it, it looks something like this. Incredible. Crazier than I expected. It felt so real. It was the coolest thing I've ever done. Out of this world. Completely mind-blowing. It's next level. I never experienced anything like that. Transporting you to a different world. It was insane. Unlike anything you've experienced. It's hard to believe that it's been only a year. Like, it feels like it's been five years of, like, game development. The lab is by far one that I think is like one of the most highly polished user experiences out there. My favorite in that was aperture robot repair and feeling the sense of fear that I may fall because the floor fell out from beneath me. I remember the floor dropped away and it was the first and I think still only moment where I've gotten fully immersed to the point where I think I'm going to fall and my heart like skipped a beat. That was incredible. Google Earth is just something I love to spend a lot of time in and just continue exploring. The long bow, I spend a lot of time in the lab. I'm just always trying to climb up that leaderboard. Job simulator, uh, just seeing the open-ended physics simulation as a real amazing area for experimentation and a type of gameplay that's just not possible on consoles. The encounters like the blue, where you're just seeing the ocean and you're underwater and everything, you know, there's a lot of fantastic shooters out there. Brookhaven is a great thing where you get to shoot zombies and you're in these really creepy environments. I still think Vanishing Realms was one of the most exciting first time I fought a skeleton. It was one of those, I shouldn't be able to do this. <laughs> and I should not be able to be this close to it and be able to stab it with my sword. I really enjoyed Gnomes and Goblins. I thought that was a great piece of wish fulfillment. I've always wanted to be in like a mystical fairy village. <laughs> Definitely a piece that was done by Peter Chan during the Tilpra Shardis in Residence program. It's in the forest, there are all these trees around you and animals. Well, I think before that point, none of us really understood something that scale could be created in Tilpra. Tilpra is one of the first experiences that we tried that got us really super excited about VR. An experience like none other that I've ever had. A fantastic contraption where you actually were crawling on the floor, like solving puzzles and manipulating objects. Call of the Star Seed, being able to like reach back and have your backpack there and have an inventory system like these are conventions that developers made specifically for VR I think one that's really super interesting is the variety of locomotion that you're seeing, specifically how does a player move inside of virtual space. And we think with Smashbox Arena we've really perfected uh, teleportation as a mechanic and movement inside of VR. And we're really excited to push that boundary even further. The thing that surprised us the most was actually the Vive tracking pucks that went out that allowed you to track arbitrary objects. The ability to not just track yourself in VR, but track any other object or any other part of yourself. Put them on your legs, create a more full body experience, or put them on peripherals, different weapons and things. It was that laptops would be supporting VR in the first year. I didn't think that was gonna happen until the second year. One thing that was was really surprising to me was the emergence of mixed reality video. It's really hard to communicate what it's like to be immersed in a room scale virtual environment and mixed reality video does it really well. I was surprised by how quickly wireless has become a viable option and I think 2017 it's really going to start to get built into more and more gaming PC quality high-end VR headsets. I was telling people that wireless video would never be possible and now like it's pretty good now and it's only going to get better and I didn't think that was even going to happen until like 2020. One person in particular was kind of not super into it. She put the headset on. She literally screamed, oh my God. And she started like jumping around the room and she was like super excited. I had to remind her of the physical space we were in. Just seeing the joy of that individual taking off the headset and just seeing the smiles on their face as they come back to reality. It's hard to explain for until you've experienced that. I was in Pittsburgh and I, I met uh, two parents there in, in our office in Seattle. We had their, their daughter here and they actually got to meet in person in VR. Her mother got extremely emotional and was like hugging her avatar and actually like was tearing up. We've had some pretty amazing experiences with people who are disabled. We've had a couple different instances where they've taken the headset off and they've been, wow, you don't realize it, but you just let me walk for the first time. 
we're going to see a lot of the same really, really fast development that we're seeing in year one. But in particular, I think what we're going to see is a lot of the solidifying of the foundations of VR. We're going to see the language of VR start to actually take more form, and we're going to see a lot of trends emerge across different types of software. I'm looking forward to people stopping conflating VR with gaming, because I think it's really the next major computing platform. I'm really looking forward to see some viable visual programming applications. Additionally, seeing Hollywood getting much more involved. Our example of working with Ready Player One is going to be a real landmark in terms of taking VR to a new level. I want more people in VR. I want more people playing it, more people creating for it. I want everyone to sort of take part in this conversation and the sense of discovery that we have with VR. Now that we've kind of established a baseline of rules, you know, what does and doesn't work in VR, the content you'll see will be pretty impressive. How people are going to innovate and how they're going to blow me away with new content. Um, that's what I'm really excited about and looking forward to. You're going to see so many different types of experiences that are going to be added to the experience with the tracker and continuing that path of open sharing. We're going to see some really incredible stuff this year. The biggest wow moment for us was how quickly Rec Room became more than just an experiment, how it became a product that a community had really formed around and loved, and, and how it became a real platform. And Cha Chen and I set up our Vise at two different locations and we're experiencing the same environment together. It had two giant smiley faces floating in a room uh, with voice chat so we could hear each other. Wow, that was a lot of fun. What could happen if we shoot each other? So we made it so you could shoot uh, little balls at each other. And then what if we had teams that could play with each other? All those questions of what ifs turned into Smashbox Arena. When I got my first demo of Tilt Brush, I painted a house and I painted a sun outside the window and then I kind of like sat down on the floor and it gave me chills, like it was the same feeling I had when I was a kid. I recently watched a music video from Kygo and I grew to the size of a universe by the time the song ended and there were lots of glowing lights and it was super trippy but it let me enjoy the song and kind of embody the space that the artist obviously had a hand in creating. Once you put the headset on people, especially in raw data, and they lower down the elevator, the music starts blaring the intensity. Watching these people get lost in the world, the fact that our team can pull people out of reality and live this experience, even if it's just for a few minutes, that, that's just magic right there. One of my biggest wow moments might have been taking off the headset for the first time. Not putting it on, <laughs> but taking it off and being like, wow, your life sucks. <laughs>